Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at what is a libero. David Luiz's role in Arteta's Arsenal explained. This video is brought to you with One Football. Check out the hashtag #ReliveEuro96 on Instagram to see my thoughts on England versus Germany. There'll be a link in the description below, so check that out. But remember to subscribe if you are new, turn the notification bell on, and like that goddamn video. Anyway, it's time to get this tactical party started. To understand what a libero is, we have to take a look at the origins of the role. In the early days of football, most teams adopted the English 2-3-5, or the pyramid. But in Switzerland, Karl Rappan developed the Rouvier, or Bolt, system that evolved from the 2-3-5 with the outside halves dropping into the backline resembling a modern 4-3-3. But in practice, when the opposition attacked down one side, the near side fullback would move to engage and the other would support behind, often leaving a spare defender and resembling a 1-3-3-3. This player behind the defence was described as a Vourier and would sweep up the danger behind the defence before starting attacks. Whilst it was a defensive system, it proved wildly successful for Rapan, who won seven Swiss league titles in his first 15 years as the Savant and Grasshoppers manager. But Rapan's bolt would go on to inspire the Italian Catanaccio system, which popularised the role of Vivero in the 1960s. Helenio Herrera's Grande Inter saw the addition of an extra defender to create a 5-3-2, with four man markers and one free defender to sweep up behind the defence. This sweeper would then be required to set up counter-attacks with long direct balls to the forwards. In this role, Herrera used Armando Pichu and Internazionale dominated European football, winning three Serie A's, two European Cups and two Intercontinental Cups across four seasons. In Italian, libero means free. This perfectly describes the early role, where the libero was the free from his man-marking duties and could double up on opponents and step in to regain possession. Above all other skills, the libero requires intelligence. Whilst athleticism is always a bonus, the sweeper needed not only the tactical intelligence to identify the danger before moving to intervene as their man-marking teammates would use their physicality in initial duels, often leaving the libero to gather loose balls before clearing the ball and launching counter-attacks. But whilst the early days saw the role confined to more defensive duties, Franz Beckenbauer would revolutionise the libero. Widely regarded as one of the greatest players ever to grace the game, De Kaiser transformed the libero role into a defensive role that had a big say on his side's attacking game. Despite playing in the centre of defence, Beckenbauer finished his career with 131 goal involvements in 544 games for Bayern Munich. Absolutely astonishing. But Beckenbauer was more than just goals and assists. He was the controller in his team. For Bayern Munich, he often played in a back five as a traditional libero would. And as soon as Bayern lost the ball, he'd immediately drop off. But whilst the rest of the defenders mainly defended in their man-to-man -man scheme on the horizontal axis from side to side, Beckenbauer defended both horizontally and vertically, dropping off to cover it in behind like a traditional sweeper, but also stepping out to engage attackers and intercept passes before launching counter-attacks where he'd play one-twos or carry the ball up the pitch before picking out attackers with excellent passing range. Beckenbauer had a fantastic tactical brain, which allowed him to do most of his defensive work through interceptions, which increased the counter-attacking threat he posed. Despite being more polished, sweeping up and launching counter-attacks was largely what the sweepers of old did. What Beckenbauer added to the role came in possession. The Kaiser would be the hub of his side. He'd receive and play one-twos with teammates, carrying through lines as they gained territory up the pitch. He played the game at his own tempo, assessing his options, when to play short to move the opponent and when to play forward line-breaking passes before moving to receive the return before he'd look to play chip passes out wide. Beckenbauer would use the outside of his boot when looking long to generate backspin on the ball, making it easier for his teammates to get on the end of his long passes. This would often bamboozle defenders with this change of direction created by this fantastic technique. But his role didn't stop in progression. Often in the final third, Beckenbauer would still be involved in the side's play, and he'd use excellent dribbling ability to often beat defenders and get shots away or when moving at speed, playing one-twos, to penetrate into the box and score goals. Arguably his most iconic goal came against Deutschberg, buying with a free kick, 
to right of centre, a position perfect for a left-footed taker. But upsteps Beckenbauer, who calmly places it in the top of the net with the outside of his boot. Not only unbelievable technique, but the audacity and composure to pull it off in a game speaks volumes of the German. Beckenbauer was a generational talent that maximised the effectiveness of his side. He probably could have had a better personal career in terms of goals and assists, playing further up the pitch but playing in this more reserved role of Villabero provided the platform for Bayern Munich and West Germany to dominate. Across his career, Beckenbauer won 19 major trophies, including four Bundesligas, three European Cups, the 1970 European Championships and the 1974 World Cup as well as a host of other individual honours, including two Ballon d'Ors. Following his revolution of the libero, it set an example for what could be done with that role. The nature of a libero at the top level of football meant that they could fit into any system, be it a back four or back five, and they'd be able to use their own intelligence to either step out or drop in to defend. But the most successful formations featuring a sweeper was Bayern Munich's 4-3-3 with Beckenbauer transitioning it to a 1-3-3-3. Another example could be AC Milan's 4-4-2 that featured Franco Baresi. This would operate around Baresi with other defenders holding in possession or Baresi dropping out of possession. And finally, Borussia Dortmund's 5-2-3 or 5-2-1-2 with Matthias Sammer, which would transition to a 4-3-3 or a 4-4-2 diamond respectively, depending on attacking personnel. Regardless of the system, but using a back five as an example, the Ribeiro would traditionally play with two-man markers out of possession and would look to cover balls over the top of the defenders, but also on the inside. They could also look to be aggressive, stepping out into defensive midfield to pressurise opponents and cover number 10s. In possession, they'd often be the fulcrum of the build-up and would step out of defence using 1-2s to progress the ball and pull the opposition around before looking for penetrative forward passes. If one of these passes weren't on and the space was out wide, they'd be happy to switch the play or even go direct into the channels. But what was key is as their team progressed up the pitch, they'd follow, often anchoring the attack from defensive midfield where they could see the play unfolding. From this position, they could use their excellent decision-making and reading of the game to move further forward to create opportunities, even driving into the box and operating as a number nine. But from this anchoring position is where you'd see a change from libero to libero. When the possession was lost, a more aggressive defender would snap and try and win possession back instantly, whereas a cover defender like Beckenbauer would back off and allow his team to return to their shape. But what set Liberos apart from other players was their completeness. They'd not only had the excellent technical and mental attributes such as passing range, technique, defensive positioning and vision, but they were fantastic decision makers. In fact, most sweepers to play at the top level of the game went on to become successful coaches with Matthias Sammer winning the Bundesliga in his second season in charge and Franz Beckenbauer winning the 1990 World Cup with West Germany. Without doubt, De Kaiser was the greatest libero to play the game, but there were some pretty decent sweepers that came after the German. None more so than AC Milan legend Franco Baresi. Baresi wasn't quite the attacking maestro Beckenbauer was, but that's not to say he was poor in possession. In fact, he'd go on to be called Kaiser Franz in recognition of his skill as a sweeper. For Milan, Baresi played the majority of his games in a back four, alongside Tosotti, Costa Curta and Maldini. This excellent defensive unit allowed Baresi to fulfill both roles required of a libero. Despite being a traditional defender down, without the ball, Baresi combined his powerful physique with intelligent reading of the game. But regaining possession through excellent tackles, often more than interceptions before starting counter-attacks, with his excellent dribbling, technique, vision and distribution. But what sets Baresi apart as a sweeper was his execution of the offside trap. With the emergence of zonal marking, tactical defending became more common, and Baresi embraced this, becoming known for stepping up and raising his arm and turning to face the linesman. But when his side was in possession, Baresi would still act as a secondary playmaker, as you'd expect of a libero. He'd receive the ball and frequently carry into midfield to start attacks, but he'd rarely get into the box to score like Beckenbauer would. During his career, Baresi would go on to play 700 times for Milan, lifting 17 major honours, including back-to-back -back European Cups, before being voted as Milan's player of the 20th century. With the evolution of football, Baresi's role as a libero wasn't quite as pure as the sweepers. 
but the final sweeper we've got to mention was the last sweeper to win the Ballon d'Or, Matthias Sammer. The German began his career as a striker, but was brought deeper and deeper over his career. The man who converted him though was Ottmann Hitzfeld, into a sweeper after returning from Italy to Borussia Dortmund. Sammer was an aggressive libero, looking to win possession on the cover through tackles like Beresi, or looking to step out of defence into defensive midfield. His excellent defensive ability blended with an ability to control games in possession. Like many liberos, Sammer was the hub of Borussia Dortmund's play, progressing the ball through creating a triangle with a central midfielder and number 10, where he'd pull the opposition close enough then look for a switch out to the wing back in space. These switches often showcased his excellent technique and passing shape excellently. Following his conversion to a sweeper, Sammer's career hit a new high, winning back-to-back -back Bundesligas, Euro 96, and the Ballon d'Or in 1996. But if you want to see more from 1996, we rewatched Euro 96 with one football. If you want to hear my thoughts on Matthias Sammer during Euro 96, especially in the semi final against England, check out the One Football app where there'll be an article where we discuss the Ballon d'Or winner. If you do want to check it out and help the channel, there'll be a link in the description below. But Sammer's pinnacle defensive performance came in the 1997 Champions League final against Juve. Initially, the systems matched up which allowed Sammer to both cover him behind the defence, but also step out to pressurise Zinedine Zidane, using his tactical awareness to identify the threat and then deal with it. After Zidane struggled in the first half, Marcelo Lippi changed the shape to create space from the Frenchman. Now Sammer had to deal with Del Piero, winning three out of three tackles against Juve's dangerous number 10. However, the change in shape allowed Paul Lambert to man Mark Zizou and Dortmund won the game 3-1. But Sammer's game by numbers speaks volumes about how good he was defensively. He won six out of his seven tackles, made nine clearances, 10 interceptions, completed five long passes, suffered three fouls, and finished off with an impressive pass completion of the 90s of 83.3%, a defensive masterclass. But let's rewind this back to the modern day. With the added fluidity and the increased scrutiny of the offside law and the disappearance of back fives at the top level, the Libera role has slightly faded, with the duties now split across multiple positions. Now that's not to say there haven't been Liberos since Sammer. Lothar Mateus was an excellent footballer that reached the Champions League final playing as a sweeper, but his best years came in midfield. He even scored 16 goals in the 1991 Serie A season, finishing behind Serie A top scorer Gianluca Villar that season. But the traditional back five sweeper combination hasn't really been successful since Dortmund and Sammer's Champions League success. But the duties are still there. The actions behind the defence, for example, sweeping up the danger and playmaking from deep, now taken on by goalkeepers, with the likes of Manuel Neuer and Alison Becker taking on that role. Whilst occasionally use of midfielders playing in defence and back three systems have seen players carry out defence into midfield to play forwards. But with a shift of the playmaker, first at number 10, then to central midfield, then defensive midfield, the next logical step could be falling back to centre back and centre halves becoming the playmakers of their side. In doing this, we could see the re emergence of the libero, especially that offensive side we mentioned before. We're already starting to see this in European football. In Ajax's 2018 19 season, they built in a 3 3 1 3, with Frankie de Jong at the base, often carrying through pressure like a libero would, whilst in goal, Onana would sweep up behind the defence. The closest thing to a libero in the Premier League is Mikel Arteta's use of David Luiz. The Brazilian under Arteta is more inclined to drop off than he has been in the past, but his importance in possession for Arsenal is what we're talking about. From the base of Arsenal's build-up, Luiz frequently carries into midfield and playmakes like a libero, breaking passes and allowing Arsenal to get their most dangerous players closer to goal. Moving forward, we could see Arteta move to a 3-4-3, with Luiz as libero, flanked by Mari and Saliba, allowing both fullbacks to attack and Luiz to step out of defence. The added benefit to this as well is you could say Nicolas Pepe a little bit closer to goal in the inside right channel as a goal scorer and potentially could improve his attack in returns. But anyway guys, what do you think? Will we see the libero return to modern football as a complete role or will it be split between a goalkeeper and another position? Let me know in the poll above and the comments below and next time we're going to get back to hashtag Ask Dave so get all your questions in below and of course check out a little bit of an article on of course Euro 96 with one football. I've been Statman Dave, see you later. Thanks for watching, if you've enjoyed this video why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel.